Hi guys, welcome back to Daniel Rosal on YouTube, Jerusalem and Israel Unpacked. I'm going to be doing today a dubbing of the uh, interrogation tape of the Hamas uh, terrorists who were uh, captured either on October 7th itself, what's come to be known as Black Saturday here in Israel, um, or uh, afterwards, it wasn't stated exactly. This was the first major interrogation tape that the Israel police and the Shin Bet, the Israel Internal Security uh, Agency, have released. There have been other ones, but uh, just as a sort of public service to make it accessible for uh, whoever wants to watch it in this and prefers the audio format, I'm going to be dubbing today uh, live as best I can the uh, the interrogation. Uh, just as just to note, the interrogation, the original audio will be playing will be playing faintly in the background and uh it's in arabic they interrogate them in arabic they respond in arabic and uh it's uh probably was recorded in some police station somewhere and uh if i need to catch up on words i'm going to pause the video but otherwise i'm just going to run through with this so let us go what's your full name jihad fauzi mohammed hamayad and you're responsible for what exactly i'm a unit commander from where Shabura, which is in Rafa. What's your full name, Yahya? Yahya Majid Sabri Soidan. And where are you from? Nusayrat. Nusayrat. So that's uh, that's in Gaza. And what's your role? I'm a Hamas operative. What unit? A commander in the Qassam unit. What's your full name? Ahmed Majid Ahmed Abu Hamid. And where are you from? Which area? The Eldarit neighborhood in Gaza. What's your full name? Mohanad Yasser Zib Abu Razin. And what area do you live in? Shabura. Shadi Mohammed El Majdalo. One second. Where do you live? Nusayrat. What organization do you belong to? Hamas. What's your full name? Hamza Mohammed Ibrahim El Zarka. Hamza Mohammed Ibrahim El Zarka. And where are you from? From Gaza, from Tafah. What organization do you belong to? Which operative are you? Hamas. Where in Hamas? The Qassam Brigade. Qassam or Nukba? The Nukba. And what exactly was your mission on October 7th? To break into the Sufa military outpost of the IDF. Besides that, was there any other mission? The Kibbutz. We were supposed to continue there after a day or two in Israeli territory. But there are civilians in Dekel. The instructions regarding civilians were, you know, to kill the men, uh, take the elderly, the women and the children as prisoners. Mm -hmm. So to kill all the men, just the young ones. The young ones who were civilians? It doesn't really matter, army, civilians. So, we reached the border on our way to the Berry Kibbutz. Berry, what were you supposed to do there? We are supposed to take it. So tell me, what was your mission? Kidnapping. Kidnapping and taking prisoners from Kfar Aza? Yep. And when they told you to kill and kidnap when you're going to a village where there are civilians? Did you know that? Which commander has told you to kill civilians? The one who told us that was Mohammed Nabad al Batash, the squad commander. And what did he tell you? He said that our mission is Kfar Aza. We have to kill and kidnap the ones we can, just like that. Tell me, what was your mission on October 7th? What, what was exactly what you set out? To take over the, uh, it was to take over the Sufa military posts. We wanted to settle in it. But what else were you supposed to do? We were supposed to just control them, to kill them. To kill them, what else? After that, to continue to hold the posts. When we were there, the platoon commander received instructions from the company commander who told him, kidnap for me. When we came in in the morning, we, the operatives of the Nukba, we came in to take prisoners and to stay in the houses. We gathered at Salama al Bispis. Abu Zid told him, cleanse the houses and kidnap as many Israelis as possible. In Gaza, whoever brings a captive, they were supposed to receive a grant. What was he meant to that grant? An apartment and $10,000. For every captive, you got an apartment? Yep. Who told you this? That's what kind of the word was in the Qassam Brigade. Al -Qassam. The commander of the Al Qassam told you this? Yep. He told us that. For every captives you bring, you get an apartment? Yes. Because they wanted captives, as many as possible. The goal of the infiltration for them was to take captives. Okay, so what was your mission on October 7th? To infiltrate. Infiltrate where? For Aza. To do what? Cleanse it. Take control of it. What do you mean by cleanse it? To empty it. Of what? People? To kidnap them or what? We didn't kidnap. So what? Just kill? 
It's empty the houses, yes. What did the El Qassam Brigades do in Kibbutz Berry? They murdered them. Murdered who? Civilians. Two of them went into a house. The front door was closed. They shut, they, shut the, they, they shut the door. We heard voices coming from inside the house. Two more went in after that. Someone was lying near the door. I don't know if he was dead, but there was blood next to him. Inside, there was an injured person. I assume it was an entire family dressed in their clothes of the house. The injured man was in his underwear. A woman came out wearing a dress. Just a regular dress, a dress for going around the house. And then a second woman came out in a dress and a boy and a girl. Then we went left and there's another. we found another house. They took a woman out of that house, an elderly woman, and they covered her. These men who were with you, did they use did they use his family as a human shield? Oh yeah, they did. Okay, tell me, when you were in Far Aza, what exactly did you do and those who were with you? So in the first house, there was a woman. Hamza shot at the door. Tell me, this woman, when you saw her, like what did you see about her? I saw that she was lying there, but I didn't go near near her. Her dog went out into the street, so I shot the dog. And then there was somebody in the garden. The civilian that you killed, was he armed? No. How many shots did you fire at him? Two or three. Where did you shoot him? In the chest. The chest area? What happened after that? Afterwards, we began to walk around. There were two houses, I think. We set them on fire, several fires. Tell me, what you do? What did you do in Berry and how did you clean, cleanse the houses, you say? So as soon as I entered into Berry Kibbutz, I saw two people on a motorcycle. They took a woman about 60, 65, thereabouts, on the motorbike. They took her where? To Gaza. After Suleiman and Karim killed that woman from the village, al nukba brought someone about 40 or 45 years old, a brown man, he wasn't tall. Ahmed Abu Daruj took him. And where did they take him? Back to Gaza. When we went back, they took a girl out. She was about 15 or 16 years old. What did you do to her? She stood. They took a selfie with her. Some of them said, shoot her. And others said, don't shoot her. Take her as a captive, as a hostage. So they took uh, pictures with her and somebody took a selfie and then they put her on a motorbike. There was a house that we all approached. Someone from the engineering corps came, the one with the crooked mouse and glasses, I don't really know his name. He brought two strip charges and a shaped charge, which was round, and the window exploded. A little opening was made in the window and he brought a metal pole to pry open the window. But the person that was inside the house shot at him. So they threw four grenades at him. Two didn't explode, but two did. So they killed him? Yes. What did you do? We shot at the windows and at the doors. Who did you shoot at there? I shot an old woman, an elderly woman. Was she, was she front of you? What did you do? Please explain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I surprised her and I shot her. Where did the bullets hit? They hit her shoulder. And what happened to her? She fell. What else did you do in the house? Well, we set the house on fire. We set two houses on fire. The house next to you, who set it on fire? Muhammad Basil. How many people did you murder? Just one. What else did you murder? Muhammad Basil murdered one as well. Who is that person, Muhammad Basil? Maybe, I think he was in his 40s. What did he do? He was watering the plants. Was he armed, the guy you killed? No, no. No, he surprised him. He was a civilian? Yes, he was a civilian. There was a body lying on the floor next to the door of the house with two or three bullets in the head. The head was just blown open. There were also bullets in the chest at the top, so I shot her once in the back. How many times did you shoot at them? I shot him once, and I shot the second person in his right leg. After I shot, Salama yelled at me, Why did you shoot? You're wasting your bullets. He was angry at you because you wasted bullets? What do you expect you to do? Conserve ammo to shoot more civilians? Yes, that's what he wanted, to kill more civilians. People in the protected room, the Mamad, closed the door. Imad and Abu Aida went outside and said, There are Jews inside. There was a window there, closed with an iron cover. They told the people inside to open it and get outside. They were scared, they didn't want to come out. So they placed a strip charge. They placed it on the window and they blew open the window. A little opening was made because of the charge. So somebody laid a piece of cloth and said, let's choke them with smoke. 
The woman got scared and she opened the window. Later, someone came from the site. I remember how he looked, but I don't remember his name. He yelled, they killed her children and her wives. And he began shooting at them. Did he kill them? Yes. He shot about 10 bullets at them and then he shot the young woman and mother. The young woman was around 18 and there was another one who was about 20. Their mother, their father, four and a little dog. They killed the dog as well? Yes, they did. How many shots did they fire? I don't know. The first one fired like possibly 10 bullets. The rest, each one maybe shot two or three bullets each. The young woman was armed. Did they have any weapons to defend themselves, the people you killed? Nope, they didn't have any weapons at all. They didn't shoot. But the one who came, he just started shooting like this, left and right all over the place, rapid fire, like in a barbaric manner. And what does the Quran, the Islam say about this? No. According to Islam, you're a Muslim, right? Yes. Does Islam tell you to act in this way, to, to kill civilians? No, it doesn't. No? No. So let me just understand. You don't think these actions are like those of ISIS to kill civilians indiscriminately. Correct. I don't think they're in accordance with Islam. The religion, Islam forbids it. The Prophet said, don't kill, don't kill a woman, don't kill a child. Muhammad. This is a verse. The religion does not allow you to mutilate corpses or to abuse. So according to the things that were done and what you saw yourself, What's the difference between these things and the actions of ISIS, Daesh? Mm, I would say there's really no difference in terms of the abuse. According to Islam, when you go like that, killing civilians, you kill people, you kill babies. No, killing babies is not legitimate according to Islam. So tell me what happened then? Does Islam accept what you did? Absolutely not. It says, don't chop down a tree. So there are two names for those who what you did are ISIS, ISIS Hamas, Hamas Daesh. Is it permitted to just murder a woman in the way you did, according to Islam? No, it's not. Why all the killing? What happened exactly? They tricked us. They enticed us to do things. They sort of fooled us. Who tricked you? The Hamas. They sat in their homes and they just left us in the Gaza Strip to do these actions. That's what you think? Yes, that's what I think. Those in Qatar and Turkey who speak in the name of Al-Aqsa and Muslims, but they stay there overseas while they make us the, the pawns. Who? The people in Qatar? Yeah, the leadership. Like uh, Ismail Haniya, Khalid Mashal. So that's what you think that they sort of tricked you? Yeah, they basically tricked us. They're out there in Qatar and Turkey while our families are being bombed in Gaza. The leadership of Hamas abandoned us. Who are those people? The leadership of Hamas. When you say Hamas, who are you referring to exactly? I mean the whole organization. But who? The heads of Hamas. Who are the heads of Hamas? Sinwar, Haniya, Abu Khaled. These are the people I call the heads of Hamas. And you say they're the ones who destroyed Gaza? Yeah. How did they destroy Gaza? In every way, do you see that there is anything left in Gaza? No, there isn't. Gaza does not exist. Gaza is destroyed. And who destroyed it? They did. Hamas with their own hands. And we, with their own hands, destroyed Gaza. All right, guys. That was the first interrogation taped uh, dubbed in English. I hope that this kind of shed a bit of light or uh, brought the material to life a little bit for those who... Uh, don't uh, speak uh, Arabic or Hebrew where it's dubbed in. And uh, if there are more that are released, I will do my best to dub those as well. Thank you for watching. If you want to get more videos about life in Israel and Jerusalem, then please do consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. Have a great day.